Hey friends, my name is Bond, this is Oleg, and in today's video we're gonna do a review of a diver watch. In order for me to review this watch properly, I first have to tell you how I came about buying this watch, how I found out about this watch, and where exactly I purchased it. If you're not interested in knowing how or why I bought this watch, I will have a time code in the description below. You can just skip ahead to the review portion of this video. A few weeks ago, I was out and about doing the usual rounds, stopped by one of the local watch stores, and started talking to one of the salespeople, really nice guy, uh, just asking him which models were hot, which models weren't selling so well. Also just talking about how crazy watch market is in 2021. And he told me about this crazy watch that was released a year ago called Ocean Star Decompression Timer 1961. It's a limited edition watch with this nice rainbow dial. And he told me that they released only 1,961 pieces. The store only received one of those watches and it was pretty much instantly sold and ever since he kept on getting calls and emails people wanting this watch if i was a normal person when i came home i would have just left it at that but of course i am a watch enthusiast i couldn't just let it go so i started doing a bunch of research about this uh, decompression timer and i really liked it it was a cool concept cool watch and of course on the resale market they were going pretty much for double the retail value I thought double, uh, it's a little bit too much to pay, just left it at that. Then literally the next morning I wake up, check the news and I see Houdinki has posted an article about this uh, blue version or turquoise version of the same decompression diver being released that day. I right away went on Houdinki shop and I saw that they still had them in stock instantly bought one it still is a limited edition it's pretty much exactly the same watch as the watch released last year just a different color combination some people might say it was meant to be i don't believe in that sort of thing but i thought it was a cool story to share with you guys that literally the night before i found out about this watch then the next day it was released it was actually sold out within a few hours at least from the hodinki shop it was sold out within a few hours if i didn't stop by that watch store the night before or if this release was literally a couple of days earlier i would have missed out on a pretty awesome unique timepiece now that i have it let's review it together first let's talk about the dimensions of this case so the watch has a 40.5 millimeter diameter it's about 47 millimeters from one lock to another it has a lug opening of 21 millimeters which is a bit odd we'll talk more about that later and it's about 13.5 millimeters thick including that boxed and domed sapphire crystal the first thing you see when you look at this watch of course is this crazy color combination and don't worry we will talk about this color combination and this crazy dial but first let's talk about the case finishes and the case materials so the watch is made out of 316 l stainless steel it has an all polished finish so no part of this watch is brushed it's all high polish a bit weird a bit out of the box for me personally because i would prefer a watch that has a bit of polishing and brushing alteration uh, this one here very shiny really stands out on your wrist and by the way on the wrist it wears pretty well i have about seven and a half inches wrist and for the most part it's a very nice and comfortable fit yes the thickness is a little bit on the thicker side 13.5 millimeters but a lot of that does come from a domed sapphire crystal so actually on the wrist it fits pretty well plus it has a short lug to lug distance which would make this watch a fairly comfortable fit for guys with medium to even some smaller size wrists i'm not going to spend much more time in this review talking about the case because it's pretty much identical case to other ocean star watches it is also powered by the same movement as other ocean star models the eta powermatic 80 which of course has 80 hours of power reserve it's a really nice solid movement easy to service and since mido is part of the eta group it is powered by the eta i know that eta now is kind of tying down the distribution of their movements to other manufacturers so me personally i didn't know too much about mido as a brand i never owned any mido watches in fact i don't even know anyone who owns a mido watch however when i started learning more about the decompression diver and the usefulness of the decompression scale on the dial it started appealing to me a little bit more plus the black version was a very very good looking watch now this turquoise version with the blue bezel and the silver dial in my opinion is even better looking that might be subjective and maybe i'm saying that because i actually have one of these watches and i don't have the black one 
but at least that's how I feel. I think this watch here is very unique, very fun, and of course, very out there. One of my favorite design elements of this watch, besides of course, this crazy over the top dial, is the domed sapphire crystal. Vintage watches with domed crystals have this ability to warp and distort the dial. Even though the crystal is not acrylic or hassleite, it almost feels like it is. I don't know how Mido achieved this, but the crystal doesn't feel like a sapphire crystal, which is a good thing. I think other watch brands that are trying to do vintage inspired divers should take notes from this watch. Let's talk about the bezel. So the bezel does have that aluminum bezel insert. Easy to scratch, but of course it's a callback to the vintage diver. This is the reissue of the 1961 uh, decompression scale diver. If you have a keen eye, you probably noticed that this diver bezel is not your average diver bezel. Instead of counting up, it's counting down. So it's meant to measure your decompression time as you're coming up. The other super unique part of this watch is of course this crazy over the top dial. We have applied indices for hour marks, a date at the three o'clock position. Normally the date would bother me on a watch like this, but I actually think on this one they did a pretty good job of integrating that date. So I don't mind it at all. Right in the center, we have some Arabics for 12, three, six, and nine, and applied Mido logo. From the pictures, I assumed that Mido logo is gonna be printed on. It was a pleasant surprise when I unboxed the watch and found out that the logo is actually applied. Now let's talk about the decompression scale. So first of all, it is a useful function and the colors here are picked very deliberately because at different depths, uh, certain shades of colors disappear. So the order of these colors is very important. And of course, the decompression scale is a useful function. In 1961, these watches were the diving computers of today. Nowadays, not too many people will be using a decompression scale, but back then you could use it. And I guess today you still could use it, probably wouldn't. I personally am not planning to use this decompression scale, although I am planning to get into diving. That's a story for another video. Uh, but nevertheless, the decompression scale is something cool something unique and something that reminds me of the time when watches were really tools, tools that you used on daily basis. That little bit of detail, that little bit of utility that this watch has over other watches just makes it to me more special. I quite like it. However, there are some negatives. So one of the first negatives that I noticed about this watch is the poor loom. Here's a loom shot for you. Yeah, for a modern diver watch, it's quite poor. Maybe for a vintage watch, it would be fine. I think Mido could definitely do better with loom. Second negative is the bezel action. It's a 60 click unidirectional bezel action. The problem comes to the grip and how much resistance there is on a bezel. It's not a very pleasant bezel to turn and there isn't enough grip to really grip onto this bezel to turn it so definitely can be improved. And the last negative I want to mention is the 21 millimeter lug opening. Luckily, Mido did include two other straps besides this mesh strap in the box. So we also find this blue kind of a fabric strap as well as this tan leather strap. Both straps look great. They work really well with this watch and each one makes the watch look a little bit different in its own way. So Mido did redeem themselves a little bit by including extra straps, but I still wish that this lug opening was either 20 or 22 millimeters. 21 millimeters is kind of an awkward middle child where you don't really have any straps that fit this watch out of the box. You need to go ahead and order a specific strap for this timepiece. The retail price of this watch is 1,250 US dollars. That's how much I paid for this watch. However, on the resale market, I've seen them go for as high as double the retail price. Um, for $1,200, $1,300, it's a really good watch. For $2,000 plus, I wouldn't pay that much. It is a really cool watch, but I don't think it's worth more than $2,000. That's just my opinion. So that's it. That's the review of my Mido Ocean Star Decompression Timer 1961. Wow, that's a mouthful. Fun fact, 
this is actually the very first watch that I bought in 2021. So it's special for more than one reason. I appreciate you watching this video until the end. Please give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. We release new videos every week and leave a comment in a comment section below. Let me know what you think about this Mido Ocean Star. Do you like it? Do you think it's too crazy? Leave your thoughts below. I always enjoy reading your comments. By the way, today on my wrist, I'm wearing a Bramont S302. I haven't done a review of this watch yet. That's a little sneak preview for what's to come in the future. Subscribe to the YouTube channel so you don't miss that video when it comes up. In the description of this video, you will find two links. There is a secret link and there is a link to bondnatostraps.com. That's actually what this Bramont is sitting on, a Bondnato strap. So if you're looking for a good quality NATO strap and want to support this YouTube channel, have a look. Thanks for watching this review. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you had fun and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. You're the star of the channel. People demand to see you. If not you, who else is going to review watches? Nobody else knows as much about watches as you do. Oh yes. That's right.